anyone else just read the description of one book and look at the cover and then decide you love this author and then start collecting all of their books without actually reading any of them? Or is that just me? <laughs> We're going to discover if I truly love Katherine Walsh the way I think I do in this vlog. I'm going to read three of her books and I'm going to explain how this happened because I actually have already mentioned most of them in other YouTube videos. So first I'm in the Spivey's book club on Facebook. I think I can link it below. If I can't, then I'll just put the name so you can search it. But they do book exchanges a couple times a year. So you make a wish list of books you want, someone draws your name, they pick a book off your list, send it to you. I was looking for holiday themed books and I found Holiday Romance by Katherine Walsh. So I added it to my list and that was the first time I'd ever heard of her. Then in the middle of December, I did a YouTube video on books I had bought with Kindle credits. So I had racked up a ton of credits, delaying shipping on Amazon, and I went out and picked some books. And so then I found The Rebound by Katherine Walsh. Now I hadn't read Holiday Romance yet, but I was so convinced I would love her that I went ahead and bought that book with credits. I will link the vlog that I'm talking about below and in the cards. Then luckily the person who drew my name did pick Holiday Romance to send to me, so I read it and I absolutely loved it. So my initial thought that I'm going to really like Catherine Walsh seemed to be true. I did vlog that when I went to California to visit my brother and his family for Christmas. I will link that vlog below and in the cards. I also do a lot of advanced reader copies and I get a lot of them through NetGalley. So then when I saw The Matchmaker by Catherine Walsh go up, I was like, hey, I think I like her. So I apply for it and I get a copy of it and it comes out April 18th, which is next week. And I was like, okay, this is a great way to see if I actually like Catherine. And then just last month I had more Kindle credits expiring and so then I found One Night Only by Catherine Walsh and I was like, what the heck, we might as well just read all of her books. So I grabbed that one. I will link that video below and in the cards, but because I've acquired three more books with one of them coming out next week. We're going to read all of them and confirm my hypothesis that she's fantastic. So I just wanted to kick this vlog off. I'm actually heading to work, but we're going to start the rebound and I will give an update on it tomorrow. I am already 30% into the rebound and I, just like the other one, I'm loving it. So the premise of this book is Abby is from a small town in Ireland, but she's been living in New York working for a huge bank slash financial company and her life is just really gone south. She and her fiance kind of drifted apart and caught off their engagement at the same time that the company went under. So she lost her job. And since it was a financial institution, she had her savings, retirement, everything tied up in that bank and they can't pay any of it. So now she's unemployed with no money. So she's come back to the small town in Ireland that she's originally from. And she's staying with her sister who they have kind of an estranged relationship. So the sister and the sister's husband and the sister lives in their old childhood home and the guy next door, Luke, is a friend from childhood but she doesn't remember that. He gives her a ride from the train station and she has no idea who he is and now that it's coming back to her, there's a little bit of tension happening between them. She's also just made a new friend in town and she's just really trying to get back on her feet. But just Catherine's writing is funny like she just puts some funny lines in here I'm gonna try and highlight some of them so the next time I do like a face-to-face -face update I can read some of them to you but I'm feeling kind of like blah right now and I have to go to work so I'm gonna show you what I do on these days I'm gonna set up my little reading tray with cozy pajamas my book some tea that way basically I can come home eat dinner and get in bed <laughs> maybe take a shower and then get in bed so let's go set up my tray so it'll be ready for me when I get home You guys had seen me set up that tray. I had a whole plan. I was gonna have like a spa night. I was gonna do a face mask. I was going to read in my cozy giant bed. And um, yes, when I came home from work, our sweet little girl, Hobo, 
she's not doing too well. So Hobo is 16 years old. She she's old. She has health issues, um, and she's just not able to support her weight right now. And um, one thing about me is I'm a catastrophizer, so I'm like, oh, this is the end. Um, she could just have arthritis. So I'm trying to like keep myself calm. But either way, I can't go to sleep right now. So I have set up right here. I have some tea and some water. It is red because I have to add flavoring to it because I'm a child. Um, so I, ha I have like, um, you know those Mio drops or whatever they're called? I have like Walmart brand that is add to the water. Anyways, wow, this was unfocused, but I'm going to keep reading, monitor her, drink my tea. I don't have to leave the house tomorrow, so I have a lot of flexibility to just go with the flow. So that's why you thought you were going to see me read in the other room, and I'm in this room. Anyways, the book is really good. Let's jump back in. I just got out of the bath. I'm going to put on a quick face mask and I wanted to give you guys an update. I've read about 65% of the book. I have like an hour and a half left and I am really enjoying it. There's just something about her writing that is so funny. And so this book definitely is kind of like a slow burn and like I don't want to give anything away but I will say. So they start to, Abby starts to build a relationship and then her friend was like, Oh, I like him. And then she's like, oh man, like I just made a friend in this small town. I don't want to like sabotage their potential relationship. So she backs off. Obviously he doesn't know that. So he's like, why did you cool the jets? And so there is a little bit of back and forth tension, but I am really enjoying the story. I can't remember from Holiday Romance. I don't think we get any spicy scenes in this book, but it is still like a fun contemporary romance, so I'll read a little bit tonight. I'm going to try and finish it tomorrow morning. I'll check in with you guys. I have a baby shower tomorrow at 4. Nothing else going on. So we'll definitely be able to finish the rebound and then start the second one. But so far, still a massive fan of Catherine Walsh. What's the lead? I don't have my voice, which is why my husband brought me a Slurpee. So sweet. Make this really fast. I finished the reunion. I loved it. I'll tell you about it when I have my voice back. So we're going to dive in to One Night Only, the second book of the vlog. So you'll just see me reading, and hopefully when I finish it, I can talk again. <laughs> Sorry, you guys are kind of far away. This is my last day at home. I have to go back to work tomorrow. I am feeling better. But I'm trying to take it really chill today. So I went to Walgreens and got some Mucinex, which is helping. And I might have gotten Duncan on the way back in. So I've got Buster, Hobo, my book, my weighted blanket. And we're just going to have like a chill afternoon. I'm just trying to take it easy so that way I'm ready for the work week. So this book is really good. All of her books are really good. And I promise I'll give an update on them when I can talk a little bit more clearly.
You guys saw me in this bed last night. I'm here again because I'm getting such a bad coughing fit at night that I don't want to wake up my husband. So I'm just sleeping in the guest room. And I'm actually going to stay up late tonight in hopes that I'm so tired that once I fall asleep, I stay asleep. We'll see. But I'm going to go ahead and have another beer and try and finish my book. I have 45 minutes left. Still don't have a voice. Still can't really talk about the books. But that's just a quick update of what's happening. So I'm still reading One Night Only, but I'm going to finish it right now. It has been a week. I lost my voice last Saturday. It's now Saturday. I still don't have it. And I really want to tell you guys about these books. So we're just going to go forward. I hope you can understand me. Catherine Walsh. I love the way she writes her characters. And I feel like she does a really good job of building their personality. And I'm going to read this to you. And I feel like some of you are going to be like, it's not that funny. But I just love it. So in this chapter, well, in this book, I'm reading The Matchmaker. She works at a bar and she's working on cocktails. Now, the owner of the bar, Adam, isn't really into cocktails, but she says, like, she can only post so many pictures of pints of beer before it gets boring. But then she does go on to say that they have a healthy 78 followers on Instagram, though one of them is her and another account she set up for Plankton the Cat, but they still count. And I just feel like adding something like that, like, that's something I would say, you know, like, Oh, I might only have like a hundred followers, but there's still a hundred followers. Like, I don't know. It just kind of adds like this element of realness to the character with like that inner dialogue that just makes me really like I can picture actual people running like tiny Instagram accounts saying that. And so I just feel like like these are actual lives that I'm watching. And that's why I love these books so much. So I'm gonna dive back in. I don't feel confident I'll have my voice back by the end of this vlog. Also, I just filmed another one that will be out by the time this one comes out. I'll link it in the show notes. Don't have a voice in that. Will I ever have a voice again? Yes. Think positively, Nicole. But anyways, I'm going to go back to drinking my cider, which is not helping with my voice and read my book. <laughs> I finally finished the last Catherine Walsh book. I can't believe that it took me nine days to do this and I never got my voice back. What the heck is going on? So we're gonna sip tea and just go ahead and recap. And I've said this in a couple of videos now. I hope you guys can understand me. And one day we will have the voice back. Before I dive in, I wanna say I really liked all three books and Catherine Walsh kind of had like an environmental thread running through a couple of them. So I'm thinking she's really passionate about the environment, which we love to see. So. The first book I'm going to talk about is The Rebound. For each book, I'll just highlight what I really liked about them. So with The Rebound, Abby was living in New York. She lost her job. She lost her savings, her housing, her fiance, all in like one fell swoop. And so she comes back to Ireland to be with her sister. When she comes back, Luke gives her a ride back to town. She doesn't remember Luke from her childhood. So it's a childhood 
friends to lovers storyline which we love although they were like completely separated for years also she and her sister had a really strained relationship and her brother-in-law kind of helps her and her sister repair that so I loved seeing that thread as well and then the sister works for an environmental protection organization so I really liked a lot of the different elements in this book and if you're into that childhood friends to lovers storyline I think you'll really like this one the second book is One Night Only. This one is totally different because it starts off with a one night stand. So from a steam perspective, you kind of get that up front, which I really enjoyed. And then what's funny about this one is she goes back to be in her friend's wedding. The guy she had the one night stand with is on the groom's side in the wedding. And it's awkward like, oh my goodness, we know each other in a very different context. And so it's kind of put in that backdrop of a wedding. And it's really fun because it's just like, are people going to figure out that they have this experience? What are their reactions going to be? Is a relationship going to go anywhere? And I just thought it was really fun. I will say that it probably was my least favorite. And we will do a ranking of all of them at the end. It probably was my least favorite because although I liked the premise of the one night stand, I really liked the books that had the family woven in, which her other books had. And I feel like this one was missing that she was really close with her friends but I don't feel like the family was a huge component but it was still a really enjoyable read and the third book I read was The Matchmaker which is Katie and Column, and I just finished that this morning so Katie lives in a really small rural Ireland town her parents died when she's really young and she's raised by her grandparents she works at the local pub and between her grandmother and the friends she's made at the pub this is like her home and she's never left town well, like I said, it's a rural town. There's hotels coming in. They're going to revamp the town, but really they're just going to destroy everything and build a whole new town. And she's desperate to stop that from happening. Callum works for the construction company that is doing this project. And so she gets this idea to bring back this matchmaker festival, which is why the book has its title. So they used to host a matchmaking festival in this town many years ago. Her parents met there. A lot of people in town met their love of their life there. And she goes, I'm going to bring the matchmaking festival back. People are going to find love here. It'll bring commerce, tourism to the town, and then you guys won't destroy us anymore. And so she and Callum kind of start as enemies because he's in the company that's trying to destroy her town. So I would call it an enemies to lovers. Although I, it's not like enemies like hate each other because that part happens really fast but it still was really fun and I just loved the community and family aspect in this one and I can 100% picture this festival happening in Ireland so it made it a really fun read. And for my definitive ranking of the Catherine Walsh books, number one I am going to put Holiday Romance which I did not read in this vlog but I read it in my Christmas vlog linked below. I think part of it was it was my first book by her and it was just my first introduction to her style of book. Also, I read it on the plane going to vacation so it's got like some nostalgia tied to it. So that book is number one. Matchmaker is number two. It was such a fun read. Then I'm going to put The Rebound as number three and One Night Only as number four. That being said, all four of them are fantastic. Some of them are on Kindle Unlimited. Some of them are not, but they'd be great books for you to use Kindle credits if you're earning those from Amazon. You can't go wrong with a Calvin Walsh book, and I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog. <laughs>